Now, I understand that at one time these were taken to Des Moines and rung, and now that was before my time. So, anyway, this is one of those cowbells that they took to Des Moines when we went to the state tournaments. We are so pleased to have you this afternoon. This is the last open house for the summer, but we may do something in this fall, so just keep your eye out in the hometowner and um, on Facebook. Um, this is Mr. Robert Bob Valentine. <laughs> Most of you know who he is, but you know, for years I couldn't call him anything but Mr. Valentine, but I did get to the point where I could call him. <laughs> he was my biology teacher back in the day. And um, I don't know that I need to really introduce him any more than that. We do have a, um, we're going to do a uh, <laughs> drawing. Drawing. Thank you very much back there. <laughs> so if you haven't put your name in the drawing, please do that. And also we have free postcards. Uh, so if there's anything there that you'd like to take, please do that. And I will turn it over to right. Mr. Allen. Thank you very much. Thank you for people for coming. Glad to see you, and I'm glad that all of the troublemakers are in the first row. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. So that any of you back there are troublemakers who will make room right up here. <laughs> and change a bit. <laughs> now we do have a timeout room after. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, uh, I want to start a little bit about telling my, about my life. Uh, in Appleton and maybe how I eventually ended up in Wellsburg. Uh, we were, I was raised on a small acreage uh, uh, on the outskirts of Applington. Uh, I had an older brother, uh, Jake, and he's still living and he's retired, uh, lives in Iowa Falls. He was a mortician of all things. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I have a younger brother that passed away about six years ago. He lived in uh, Beeman, and um, he worked for the elevator. I have a sister that's living in uh, Hampton, married, and my folks uh, lived in Applington. Uh, they uh, lived on this acreage where we had a few cows. Uh, my mother would uh, milk the cows usually, and then once in a while I would be asked to help. Uh, we had to mow the lawn, uh, we had to scoop sidewalks, uh, just the normal things at home that uh, we had to do that was just expected for us to do. Uh, when we had some uh, free time, we'd go around mowing lawns for people. Uh, I remember mowing the park in Applington, and that was the one square city block, and it would take us all day and uh, we would get eight eight dollars for that so wow. dollar an hour yeah. you know? <laughs> and uh, so then finally uh, i graduated and uh, i had a scholarship to play basketball at ellsworth college and i really didn't know what i wanted to do for sure i had an idea that i maybe would like to follow in the footsteps of my basketball coach and teacher ted anderson but I didn't, wasn't real sure, so I took a job at the service station, City Service Service Station in Applington, and uh, Johnny Coverlier ran that, and he hired me for $35 a week. Um, I got, uh, I worked Monday through Saturday, Wednesday nights and Saturday nights, and uh, I don't know, $35 seemed pretty good at that time. <laughs> But by the end of that year, I decided maybe I would, wanted to do something else. So I went to, uh, to Ellsworth and asked them if I could uh, still get a basketball scholarship, and uh, they said yes. So I went over there, and I took my first two years of education there. Um, I enjoyed Ellsworth very much. I uh, enjoyed playing basketball there. I learned a little bit that night because the coach had a curfew and uh, it was the night before a game and the uh, Tom Kelly who was a good friend of mine and also a basketball player came about came over about uh, oh, 20 minutes to 10 and we well he had been there earlier I should say 
And we studied for a while, and he finally said, why don't we go for a cup of coffee? Well, the Red Rooster was a popular <laughs> place, so we went to the Red Rooster, and who's sitting by the counter? <laughs> <laughs> the coach. <laughs> I had been starting all that year, the, my freshman year, Never got on the bench the next <laughs> night. So I learned a lesson. I really followed the coach's directions. So anyway, I finally uh, finished up my uh, career there. And uh, then I, uh, let's see, I gotta get my dates here straight. Uh, that was 60, no, 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 50 something, okay? Excuse me. I. <laughs> um, but 54 and 55, in 55 uh, I uh, met my future wife. Uh, we were at a church gathering and she was sitting next to me and we got acquainted pretty good talking about various things and I, I asked her if she had a ride home and she said, well I have to call my dad. <laughs> And so I said, well, if we leave early enough, we'll be home before the telephone gets there. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we dated uh, that year and the next year. And so uh, she had called a raft packing company and wanted to know if she could uh, be employed there. And they said, well, they didn't have any openings right at that particular time but she should call back later. Well, then uh, I talked her into going to Ellsworth with me. And uh, she did, and she took a one-year secretarial course. Uh, she was initiated over there. I never knew that, I didn't re remember going through initiation, but she did. She had a stack of old books, and she had to try to sell those in front of the tap in Iowa Falls. <laughs> <laughs> So then she took the job, then she called, uh, or they called her from Rath Packing Company, and she took the job. Um, one of the things that she had, she tells me that the first day of work at Rath for her was that uh, she had a telephone call, and she was instructed to take a Kleenex out of the box in her drawer and put that over the phone because they were going to blow out the lines. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so that's what she did. <laughs> and of course, everybody, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you know? So that was her initiation into <laughs> <laughs> so. But anyway, then uh, in uh, 56, I can get, get, excuse me, I want to get to my, make sure I get my dates straight here. I have this all written down. Make sure hey. that I follow this. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Ben Eileen, let's get that done. 57. Uh, we married in uh, August 30th of 57. So we will be celebrating our 64th year of wedding anniversary on Monday. Good for you. 64 years. All with the same wife. <laughs> All with a wonderful wife. She is wonderful. Uh, she's been through an awful lot in the last 10 years, but uh, she's doing really quite well. Yeah. And uh, let's see here. Uh, 57 years. Oh, I also have a little anniversary on the 31st, which is Tuesday. That's 31 years that I had my heart surgery. Oh, yeah. 31 years and I do amazingly well I think <laughs> physically mentally <laughs> who knows <laughs> so anyway uh, then I went to uh, the uh, Iowa State Teachers College in Cedar Falls and uh, in the uh, first summer that uh, after my first year of ISTC uh, we were going to a church in Waterloo, uh, the uh, Grace Reformed Church, and uh, we, I got acquainted with quite a character, somebody who loved to tease, and uh, 
he ran the Shelster Station on Washington Avenue, and he asked me to work there during the summer months. And I said, sure, because I would, I would look for a job. And the very first day I worked there, he came over to me, and now this is a two-bay uh, restaurant, and he was in the, uh, the bay where they had the hoist. I was in the other one where we washed cars and things of that sort. He came over to me about 11 o'clock and he said, now, Bob, I'm going to go to dinner at 11 o'clock, if that's okay with you. And I said, Benny, you're the boss. <laughs> you tell me when I go to dinner. No, he said, if that's okay. And so, yeah, so he had to clean his hands before he went. Well, I got sprayed with water. No. <laughs> and so I thought, oh, but I didn't say anything. And the next day I got sprayed again. <laughs> So I thought, oh, Benny, this is a little game. <laughs> so I tried to get him back. You know, I don't, I got to get that back. I just can't let that go. So I chased him one time with the water hose through his office, and he turned around to go in the restroom and lock the door so I couldn't get him. <laughs> and I tried a number of times, but I finally got him. He was putting a muffler on the car, <laughs> both hands tied. I had this little bulb that you fill the batteries with. I filled it with water and stuck it in his left pocket. And he had water running in his shoe. <laughs> so I got even there. Well, then there was one other time. We moved to Wellsburg on a Thursday. And Saturday night was well, Sunday morning. At 2 o'clock, I had a telephone call. A collect telephone call from Benny Benson. And he said, well, you know, that after talking a little bit, he was uh, doing an emergency call for somebody that had a car trouble. And uh, he said, well, every once in a while, well, you're probably mad at me because I, this is a collect call. And I said, Benny, you just keep right on talking because whatever the bill is, I'll get even. Oh, he said, I know you will. <laughs> so finally he said, okay, that's enough. So we, we hung up. And so I waited about three weeks, and I got the telephone bill for that call, and that was $2.50, something like that. So the next week, I picked out a little uh, keychain that he had given for uh, Christmas. I put that in a box, and I put some rocks with it, and I mailed it to COD for $7. Oh, that's <laughs> I made $5. <laughs> I went over the next day and I said, why did you accept that? And he says, I was so curious to see what was in the box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we had lots of fun. Yeah. Well, so I finished that ne that year, at uh, the next year at Iowa State Teachers College. And then there was a gentleman in the church that uh, had quick delivery. And uh, he asked me if I would work for him that summer. So I said, sure. So we delivered furniture all over the state of Iowa, mostly for uh, Bing's furniture, if you remember that, or Black's. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we also moved people from one location to another. And so when it finally got to the day that we had to move to Wellsburg, then he said, you just let me know and I'll move you over there for nothing, but I can't stay. So anyway, I, they moved us over here. And uh, so then I finished up and graduated uh, in uh, 1961 from UNI, or Iowa State Teachers mm -hmm. College. And uh, my wife was still working at Rath Packing Company, so I took a job with Birch and Lehman, and that was on a star mail route. And I would uh, pick up the truck in Waterloo at three o'clock in the afternoon, and I would go to the communities of Cedar Falls, uh, Plainfield, Nashua, Charles City, Janesville included, uh, Nashua, and then I, Charles City, and then I would turn around and come back. And then I'd get to Waterloo about 6.30, and then I would load up for Marion and Cedar Rapids. And I would leave Waterloo at seven o'clock and go to Marion and, uh, go to the post office there, I'd go to the mail, to the railroad car and load up things from there, and then to Cedar Rapids, and then back to Waterloo, and then when I got to Waterloo, then I had to unload and go, uh, load up again and go back to Cedar Falls mm -hmm. and unload. Then I would stop at my wife's, uh, at our place, because my wife was living in Cedar Falls at that time, and so then, uh, 
I would wake her up and then she would drive over to Waterloo at two o'clock in the morning or 2.30 and pick me up and then that was, that was another day. <laughs> so anyway, then it finally got to the point where we were going to move to Wellsburg because <laughs> I had interviewed with uh, Davenport mm -hmm. and Radcliffe and then I was asked to come to Wellsburg to be interviewed by the school board. And I was in the National Guard at that time. Uh, so I had a meeting and I tried to get out of that and they said, you have to be here because it's inspection night. So I finally convinced them that I could be there for the first hour and then I would kind of just skip out of the place. And so then on the way to Wellsburg, I had a flat tire. <laughs> Remember, I had an interview at eight o'clock. So I called him and I said, I'm going to be late. And I think I got here at 10 o'clock and I was interviewed. And then I remember Emery Ricano mm -hmm. took me around to show me the building. And of course, that's kind of scary in a building that you've never <laughs> been before, where all the light switches are at. And uh, so I did that. And uh, then uh, about uh, a week later, then I got notice or I got a letter from Mr. Shantz that I had been accepted uh, for the, the position of teaching biology and basketball and baseball and so on. And then, uh, so then this quick delivery guy, he uh, informed me that he would help, help us move over to Wellsford. And uh, so we did that and he said, I can't stay because I've got other work to do when I get back to Waterloo. So, we started unpacking and my wife's sister, Judy, was there and the two of them were doing that, including me, and uh, help, I was helping them. And uh, then it got time for lunch. So I went down to, uh, Judy and I drove down to Main Street and Main Street was filled with cars. And we parked in front of the old feed store, which is the store that was across from the, where the bank is now. Mm -hmm. And there were a bunch of steps sitting on there and I gave my Judy some money and sent her up to the cafe to get some food. And it was very warm and I had the window rolled down and there were two gentlemen that were sitting on the steps <laughs> and uh, they were talking low German. <laughs> and they said, <laughs> which means, I wonder where that fellow's from. <laughs> the other one said, which means I don't know him either. The other one, the first one said, it clued that's a salesman from Baltimore. They have no McCord. <laughs> Which means that I was probably a salesman from Waterloo because I had number seven on my license plate. You know, you identify the county by number. So I didn't say a word. I, now if I, that would have happened to me today, I would have said a comment of some sort. <laughs> so anyway, then the, that was that, we got moved in, got settled into the Neil Oconis' house and uh, paid $60 rent for all the time that I lived there. We lived there 11 years and then I finally bought the place. But isn't that amazing, of $60 rent? Uh, I should back up a little bit. When we went to college, um, I stayed with, uh, there were two of my classmates that had been there for their freshman year and so I was now a freshman and they were sophomores, but they were staying at a place and the people's name were Herb and Annie Axtell, an older couple, and she loved to cook. And we had breakfast at her house Monday through Friday and the evening meal Monday through Thursday. Breakfast was 35 cents, supper was 65 cents. And we had steak, chicken, ham, you know, pie, everything. Well, then my, when my wife joined uh, uh, us over at uh, Ellsworth, then they invited her to come over and have breakfast. So she were, lived about uh, two blocks from where I was staying. She stayed uh, with some people by the name of Armand Trout. And she always said that when there was a telephone call for her, they handed the telephone to her in the closet. They didn't want her to be, you know, advertising or <laughs> talk about, talking something about that they didn't want to hear about. So anyway, she would come over there and eat with us. And that was again, you know, my bill at the end of the uh, week was $9.65 <laughs> for room, which was 
And then I also worked for uh, Mike Fisher's Clothing. Maybe some of you remember that. Yeah. It was on the side street. Sure. And he gave me a dollar an hour because he wanted to go fishing. He knew my schedule and he knew that I would be on time. So when I walked in the door, he had the fishing pole in his hand. <laughs> and out the door he went and he knew what time he had to get back so I could be where I was supposed to be. And so anyway, uh, then I was hired at Wellsburg. And I was hired as a science teacher, which included uh, seventh grade science, eighth grade science. We didn't have a free period the first two years that I was here. I taught two sections of biology. I taught a section of uh, elementary PE and a section of high school PE. So I was very busy. And uh, then uh, school started in more like the last part of uh, August. And uh, then come uh, the uh, 12th of September. <clears throat> then Bo Brenneman and I went to scout. We were going to play Beeman Conrad, and it was at um, Hubbard. And so he picked me up and we went to the ball game and it was hilarious because there was one of the referees that had never refereed before. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. But anyway, so we had a good time at the ball game and my wife was expecting at that time and my I remember Bo pulling up in front of our house and my wife saying, well, you'll probably get in the house and your wife will say, well, I think tonight's the night. <laughs> I got in the house and my wife said, well, I think tonight's the night. <laughs> <laughs> so we headed off. We called Harris and Bob Peters and they came and stayed. Uh, yeah, they, they stayed at our house uh, for some reason and on our way to no, I had to take her to uh, Cedar Falls. Yeah, thirteenth uh, of September, and then that was the ni the night before, like the twelfth. It was the night where they're going to introduce teacher the new teachers. Mm -hmm. I was the only new teacher, and I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> so Colette was born on the thirteenth of September, yeah. and so then I uh, I coached basketball for head coach for thirteen years. And then Roger Moore, you remember Big Rod? I call him Big Leroy. <laughs> and uh, he uh, wanted to become the head coach and I kind of wanted to get out of it, so we switched jobs. And so then I continued coaching and I did that for 16 years. And I coached uh, baseball for 16 years. And then I did driver's ed for 16 years. <laughs> Yeah. Anybody in here that I had for driver's ed? Okay. <laughs> have, you, have you parallel parked lately? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. And I enjoyed the classroom part, but the part that really got to me was the driving part. Uh, you know, to get into the driver ed car and drive with other kids for eight hours a day. And then there would be days where I would do night driving, so I would uh, drive from 8 to 12, 1 to 5, and then I'd stay home until 9 o'clock, and then we'd take off and drive from 9 to 11. So everybody could get night driving. Yeah. We did uh, a lot of parallel parking. Um, Mr. Albert, you remember him? Yeah. He loved to tease, too. And uh, we were doing parallel parking. I would take my car, one of my cars, over on the east side of the schoolhouse, and park it and then I would use the school car and I'd have a space there which would be about the ideal space for <laughs> parallel parking whether you went to Cedar Falls, Marshalltown or whatever and uh, one time we got around the block and the car was moved. <laughs> the kid had an awful time trying to get the thing parallel parked. <laughs> well, you know who was watching me? Mr. Albert was watching me through the band window. <laughs> so I had to go move that. Anyway, then, uh, so finally uh, I got the switch on the basketball uh, taken care of, and uh, finally I decided that I should retire maybe uh, after 36 years at, in 97. And uh, finally I've done that, and then uh, I did a lot of painting around <coughs> since that time. Uh, did some painting for some of you people here. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, then in uh, 09, my wife uh, was taken to the hospital and had hip surgery. And of course, that everything and anything that could have gone wrong with her, just everything. She's had uh, 13 surgeries altogether. Uh, she had MRSA, which is a terrible, terrible infection. She was on bacamycin for a long time. She had a feeding tube. Uh, so she, she'd been through the mill. And uh, I've had her home now since uh, a year ago, January. She sleeps a lot. She does really quite well. She's easy to live with. She's a wonderful person. And uh, I take care of her as best I can. Uh, seven days a week really doesn't make any difference what day it is because I do the same thing every day. And uh, she's probably sleeping right now. She, uh, she sleeps an awful lot, which helps me out. Yeah. But um, mm -hmm. she's afraid of being alone, especially when it storms. Mm -hmm. So I was glad it's going to be a nice, you know, yeah. warm, sunny day today. So that's kind of the history of my life. I don't know if I've hit every point. But if anybody have any questions about what I did, what I should have done? <laughs> I don't have any, excuse me, I don't have any questions. I do want to say that while we lived in Wildsburg, which is over 25 years now, I'm not taking anything, trying to take anything away from your speech, but this man and I, we worked together, and some of the things that we did, we took houses down or buildings. <laughs> what a time we had, <laughs> didn't we? Yeah. All the little rusty. I, I actually saved his life because we were taking a what, like a chicken house or a hog house down. Hog house. And the the building started going a little bit. And I said, Warren, you better get out of there. So we got out, and the building collapsed. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> Good you reminded me of <laughs> No, but he was very, he did a lot, a lot for our community. Well, I'll have to say that. I, I want to do that. I, my wife says all the time, she thanks me for doing all the work. I said, I want to do that for you. Sure you do. And I, and I enjoy living in Wellsburg. You know, we talk about that so many times, like sitting on the East Porch, and we're talking about how could you ever live in a place like New York City or Chicago? <laughs> oh, those people don't know what freedom is all about, do they? No. It's unbelievable. And we can sit there and, and enjoy life. You know, and the good Lord has been so good to us. And just think of all of the world problems that are going on right now. Oh, my. And we're living in Wellsburg, and we can do this. You know, there's some places where... You, you wouldn't be allowed to do this. <coughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Did you have a favorite subject you taught? Um, Seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> she asked, do I have, did I have a favorite subject or grade? Yes, seventh grade science. Tell us a little bit about the blue team in school. Oh. Well, if it's, if it's printable. <laughs> every year at football time, uh, at the end of, or end of the football season, or the middle of football season, they would have this Everything Goes contest. And the uh, freshmen would have a color, the sophomores would have a color, the juniors and the seniors all have a color. Well, then the faculty had the blue team. And I was the captain of the blue team. What an honor. Woo! <laughs> so anyway, we did things and because we were called the blue team, we tried to figure out a different way to get our entrance onto the football field. We had uh, blue bicycles, we had blue mopeds, we had blue convertibles, we had, uh, I can't even remember. But one night, we were gonna have this entrance and uh, I was trying to figure out, and, we, and I finally decided maybe we should try a big bus blue bus and i found out that herman primus was going to be driving to uh, some senior citizens to a progress show farm progress show 
And so I went over and talked to him, and he said, well, he said, I'm really supposed to stay at this Farm Progress show until like 7 o'clock, but he said, I'll just announce that we're going to go home a little earlier. <laughs> and so he had the bar bus parked in front of the, his house where they lived on the south, uh, west end of town. And so we went, we had a uh, faculty supper at our place. And then we walked down there and we got on the bus and the bus went on the track all the way around. And I remember my wife was sitting beside Bernice Heinrich and she's, when she saw the blue bus, she said, I can't believe this. <laughs> really. But we had all kinds of contests. And finally we kind of ran out of vehicles to come in. So I decided maybe we should try to get a helicopter. <laughs> so I went down to talk to Mrs. Lovell, the guidance counselor, because she had these people coming in from the military to try to recruit students and uh, I talked to her and she said well let me find out so she talked to a recruiter and then I talked to her some days later and she said yeah I think that's a good possibility but she said you have to call the uh, adjutant general in Des Moines <laughs> and so she called the adjutant general and told him that we would like to have the helicopter deliver the blue team and the guy said, I, we would love to do that, but we would be in so much hot water, we just can't do it. So that ended that. <laughs> <laughs> but we sure had a lot of fun with the blue team. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Yeah. And we had, we had a good faculty and a lot of fun faculty. You know, Chris Eilbert, he's another guy that loved to tease. Mm. And I was on the phone between classes and he walks by and he sees I'm on the phone. He goes down to my room, sophomore biology, and he said, Mr. Valentine won't be here for quite a while. You're supposed to go to the little gym and shoot baskets. <laughs> <laughs> I, turn the, I get off the phone, I turn the corner and here's my kids coming towards me. Where are you going? Mr. Albert said we're supposed to shoot baskets. I get back in my room. <laughs> And that was a sad day when he passed away, yeah. 52 years old. Yeah. Anything else? I have a question from uh, our Facebook page. We put this on that you were going to be talking here. So somebody asked this question. This is Teresa Baker. That would be Mark Baker's wife. I can't remember her maiden name. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my. That's it. I was supposed to ask, will you ask? Bob, if he can stand on his head and stack greased basketball. <laughs> no, greased BBs. Oh, BBs, it is BBs. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay. I talked to my son the other night, and he was reading me all the things that were on Facebook. And one of the things that he read to me was that somebody had called in and said, I'm wondering if he can still stand on his head and stack grease BBs. Yeah. <laughs> Did I ever use that in some of the... You were always talking about science. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. well, my, now, my kids, our kids, uh, Kurt was a teacher in, uh, lived in Gowrie. And he taught uh, third grade for 20 years, and then he got his master's degree in computer technology and uh, got the, uh, the guy retired uh, that did that. And so he did that for 13 years. He just retired from teaching this year. He's working at the lumber yard <laughs> and working at the golf course. <laughs> and Colette, if you remember Colette, she uh, is married to Randy Niederhoff, and they live in a suburb of uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. He's a neonatologist, and they were at our house about uh, three months ago, and he was telling me that he was taking care of a baby that was born 11 and a half ounces. Wow. And I, I was wanted to ask him every time I talked to him uh, whether about the 11 and a half ounce baby. And I talked to him about eh, six weeks ago, and he said the baby went home at five pounds. Oh, wow. 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 Isn't that amazing? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Anything else? Any questions? I would just like to add one comment. Our community 
is what it is because of people. People. Yeah, I agree. If we don't have the right kind of people in leadership, we are going to go downhill. Well, a lot of people say, all well, these small towns are going downhill. Yeah. And maybe they are in some aspects. Yeah. But I say the quality of people that we have in our community are very substantial. Yeah. And we can be thankful for them. Yeah. That's all I have to say. My dad owned the, and run the grocery store in Applington. Four grocery stores in Applington. Four. <laughs> There was Diekman's across on the north side, Valentine on the west end, in the middle, DeVries Grocery, and then Jack Spratt. I think that, you know, that was kind of the name, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Jack, Jack Spratt. Yeah. The guy's name was uh, Lutz, Jack Lutz. But anyway, four grocery stores. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had three at one time. Yeah. yeah. No, we don't have any. No, we don't have any. Yeah. <laughs> and it's hard to get them. Yeah. It is. Yeah, very much so. I remember you teasing me saying that um, Valentine's Day was was named after you. <laughs> I, a lot of kids thought. I, I never corrected them. I <laughs> learned to believe that. Fine. I always wore, wore red socks on Valentine's Day, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. And coaching wise, you know, I, we had so many good. Good times coaching wise. Oh my! The one one game uh, that I remember quite well was beating Applington. Not <laughs> because my hometown at all, but it, before the uh, tournament pairings were out, this would have been uh, in the middle of December, and usually the pairing, pairings came out in uh, the first week in January. But Dwayne Nevenhoven called me and wanted to know if we could scrimmage them during Christmas vacation. And I said, sure. So I loaded up the group, and this was Cliff Wikers and Jack Hook and some of those guys. We went over there, and we scrimmaged, and we looked horrible. Just horrible. So on the way home, I'm driving the bus, and on the way home, uh, Cliff Wikers came up to me and said, we want to have practice tomorrow. And tomorrow would have been New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, we always go to my brother's. He is the funeral, owns the funeral home in Marengo. We always go there on the 1st of January. And he's, well, we'll find somebody else. And I said, okay, if you want to practice that bad, I'll be back. <coughs> so we left early from Marengo, and uh, we had practice at 7 o'clock on New Year's Day. Probably the best thing that happened because we were... At between that time, then we found out that we were going to be playing Appleton in the first game of the tournament. <laughs> the and my guys would come and talk to me and say, you know what, we will talk to some guys from Appleton, and they're even better than when they beat us so bad in, in the scrimmage. <laughs> I said, perfect, just perfect. And uh, so we got towards game time, and, and there was a Prusner that played for Appleton, and he was averaging just about 19 points a game. And I said to Keith Van Howen, you're going to be guarding Prusner tonight. And if he gets a drink of water, you get a drink of water too. If he goes to the bathroom, you go to the bathroom too. <laughs> That's how close I want you to stay with him. He scored five points that night. We beat Appleton 43 to 42. Oh. <laughs> I really believe it was one of the best scrimmages we ever had because we looked so lousy. <laughs> it's amazing how that all turns out. Yeah. Yeah. Bob, can you tell us about the game against Marshalltown? You had that, at one time you said that that was one of the, the highlights uh, get, uh, that you won at Marshalltown in the district tournament. Do you remember that game? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think yeah. my sister was a senior that year, if I remember right. Was that, that 65? Could be. Was that 65? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We played, uh, well, at that time there weren't any classes. Everybody was dumped in at one, you know. Yeah. And so we uh, started out playing, I think it was Grandview Center. We beat them in overtime. We were down 10 points with a minute and 58 seconds left. And I remember called time out and uh, I said to the guys, now we have been working on the zone press because that's what was going to be thrown at us. 
And so we started, I called time out and I said, guys, we work, work on the zone press and I want you to do that right now and do it to the best of your ability. And we started scoring a little bit. Toby Huseman was playing, he was a freshman. Took nine shots and made seven every time he'd shoot. <laughs> Toby, what are you shooting? Oh, good shot. <laughs> 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 he, scored, he took nine shots, made seven. He had 14 points in it. So we beat them, and uh, I, we ended up playing. We beat North Tama. Uh, we we uh, Rhinebeck. We beat Rhinebeck, uh, and then Rhinebeck. I called uh, some coaches to find out some information about that because they had a pretty decent record, and uh, the co all the coaches told me they're going to be pretty tough. And we beat them 88 to 44. <laughs> so then we had to play Marshalltown. And we we were ahead of Marshalltown we were. pretty much the whole game. We I kind of we just kind of got tired. Because I remember Keith Keith Van Allen was he looked over at me and he had his tongue hanging out. And he said, Come on, Keith, you gotta keep going. And we got we got beat 59 to 53, which I thought was pretty decent. And if we'd have beaten them, we'd have to play West Waterloo. Oh, oh wow. Yes. When I and some of those guys that were playing for West Waterloo, when I did my student teaching at West Junior High, they were eighth graders and they were pretty darn good. And uh, they were playing, that's who we had to play, some of those guys, yeah. So anyway, yeah, Marshalltown, we had a good, good time there. We had lots of good times, lots of good times. Anything else? Boy, you used to, you know. <laughs> Do you keep in touch with Roger Moeller? Or? Uh, I usually get uh, a Christmas card from them at Christmas time. Uh, Mr. Yobaletti called me last night. Uh, this is kind of interesting because I I call him every once in a while because you know his daughter Ashley has been yes, through an yes. awful lot yeah. and I said to him how's Ashley doing doing wonderful uh, Rachel is uh, working in Wisconsin she's engaged and Morgan is a, a senior at Iowa State Teachers College or I no, I'm sorry <laughs> Iowa State and uh, Kyle was on a five-day leave he's in North Carol station in North Carolina and he was vacationing in uh, Missouri. Uh, what's the name of the? Ozarks. Ozarks, yes, he was vacationing there. And then uh, he said, are you sitting in your chair? And I said, yes, I am. And he said, well, I'm going to tell you some news. He said, I'm going to be the assistant boys basketball coach at Grandview Center. Oh, my God. That's good. So I told him, I said, I'm going to tell all of the people at Grandview Center to get your tickets ordered next year for the state tournament. <laughs> good. So we keep in contact quite a bit. Yeah. I, I run into uh, you, Belody, quite often at Fairway. It's funny that we're, yeah. we're in... So I just saw him this week. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he retired about three years ago, four years ago. I think so. And he said uh, that he, said he was hoping that he could keep Kathy, his wife, working for another nine years. <laughs> <laughs> so there could be a Grundy Center, you say? He's going to be the boys' assistant basketball coach at Grundy Center. Evidently, the head coach right now, and I don't know, do you know who that's going to be? Must be somebody that played basketball for him at Columbus, because when he left here, he went to Columbus, and uh, that he's going to be the head coach. So this, he called Kevin and wanted him to help. So, yeah. Anything else? I'd be glad to field any other questions. I too would like to just make a comment. You are to be commended for everything you've done. Well, thank you. For thank students, you. fellow faculty members, teachers, community, a job well done. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. I love a small town. There's no question about that. I wouldn't want to live in a town any bigger than, you know, a thousand people because those people just don't realize what it's like. No. You know, we and we've been so fortunate. Uh, uh, like on this benefit that they had for us, 
Uh, amazing. They raised almost $48,000. $48,000. It's amazing. And then, of course, you know, uh, my son-in-law and daughter, Colette, calls me and says, we want to build you a new house. I said, we don't need a new house. We can do perfectly where we're at. No, no, you didn't have a, house, a new house. So I turned them down three or four times. I turned people down for this benefit. We don't need it. There's other people that need it worse than we do. And finally, they said, we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> and that's what my son-in-law said, do it. Or Colette, we're going to build it anyway. If you want to live there, that's fine. <laughs> you know, and that's wonderful. One, one time they got ahead of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good, good kids, good people. Very good. And people of Wellsburg. You know, we have so many things to be thankful for. The people of Wellsburg have been wonderful bringing food in, you know, coming over and staying with my wife when she needs somebody to stay with her, that kind of thing. Just unbelievable. Isn't that nice to hear? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That only happened in a small town. That's right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I still believe you saved kids' lives that day that you came to pick, you were on the bus route picking my kid up. Yes. Back and out of the driveway, and that yes. fog and that semi came out. Oh, yes. <laughs> Trust me, my yes. stomach dropped to the floor when I saw uh, the semi, and I real, knew you were backing out. It was real foggy that day. It right? was. It was so foggy. Yeah. I drove the bus. I remember when Herman Primus was driving a route, and he came up to me before school and asked if I could drive his route that afternoon, and uh, I said, sure. He had to go to a funeral that Fredsville Church, I believe. And so after school, uh, they let out at 2.30. I think Neil was at a dentist appointment or something and didn't get back. And uh, so he called school off and it was horrible. We, uh, we were going to Steamboat. Herman Primus was ahead of me uh, and my, myself. We had to go to Steamboat, leave some kids off, and then we had to finish the route. And so we got to Steamboat. Well, for, on the way there, this was the day that Karen Meyer had her accident. Mm -hmm. That's a blizzard. And, and uh, of course, we shouldn't didn't stop because the visibility was very bad. And we get to Steamboat, and uh, Herman comes, or uh, yeah, uh, no, Richard Schaefer comes over to my bus, and he said, "Do we stay in Steamboat tonight or what?" And I said, "Well, I don't know." He said, "Well, give that some thought." So I'm going to deliver some kids to. Uh, in town here that could go home in the country, but if I can save that trip. And so when he came back, I said, well, let's try it. And thank the dear Lord, I didn't have to go to Poseyville. Mm -hmm. I would have never, never made it. Mm -hmm. But uh, then Dave Fox said, I don't want to drive home, so can I ride with you? And so he just lived west of town. And so he rode with me and uh, it was horrible, just absolutely terrible. And we pulled in front of this one place. I had one girl left, Cusserro girl. And I said to her, can I go onto your yard and turn around? She said, I don't think so. So Dave said, well, I'll take her up to the house. So he followed the fence line up to the house. And then, of course, minutes seemed like hours, don't they, when you have that. Mm -hmm. And so finally he got back, and then I made it to town. But I remember looking out of the right door of the bus on the white line to see where I could stay. And then when I got to Wellsburg, I had a hard time finding the corner to turn to the bus bar. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it home that night. You didn't make it home, <laughs> I yeah. I stayed with my phone. Yeah, it was really bad. So, yeah. So that day, yeah, with the fog, that was, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I made it to the dining room in time to see the wheels spinning on the back of the bus to get it back on the driveway yeah. and I just went. Yeah, and then this hog truck went Yeah, down. he was going way too fast way for too the weather fast. that we yeah. had that day. Because yeah. my husband went out that night and he's got one of those really long tape measures. 160 foot of skin works from him. Really? 160 foot. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I had Neil Oconus rode with me mm -hmm. one night when it was really bad and I don't know, they always seemed to ask me when <laughs> you can handle it. You're the hero. You're the man. Oh. Uh, anything else? My, just 
Okay, just imagine this as study hall. Okay. <laughs> 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 I remember the first year I was here, we had study hall in uh, what was uh, then, you know, the uh, music room. Wasn't it the music room or the library? No. It was the library, now it's the music room. Yeah. It was the library? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. And I had 53 kids in study hall. All the tables were filled with either four or six kids. <laughs> And you catch somebody rolling a BB on the floor, or... <laughs> no. Where were you the day that John no. Kennedy, in what class, when he was shot? I was in the gym, I think. Yeah, I, yeah. Elementary PE, I think. Yeah. I had a... When I was coaching baseball, we went to Athlete. And it was uh, in the first game of the year, and it was snowing when we got there. <laughs> so I told the infielders, I said, now, if you miss a ground ball, roll up a snowball and throw it to first base. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it'll work. <laughs> but when they, got, when they got off the bus, <laughs> when they got off the bus, I told them to put their give me their billfolds and their watches and their rings and so on. I could put it in the first aid kit. And so this kid gave me this billfold and I, my thumb said, that's a school key. <laughs> so I waited until he got off the bus and uh, I opened up the billfold and I had a master key because at that time we just had a master key. And then uh, I compared it, sure enough, it was a master key. I stuck it in my pocket. Nothing was ever said until, and he became a doctor. He's living in Arizona, and he was back during my school year, and he'd always contact me, let's have a cup of coffee, if it was my free period. So we'd go down to co coffee, and we got down by the business room 18 years after he graduated. And he said, Mr. Valentine, I've never had the guts to ask you, but I'm gonna ask you today. Did you take a key out of my bill for it? <laughs> and I said, yes, I did. He said, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All kinds of experiences, I'll tell you. But you also kept it to yourself. Yes, I did. You know, that's, yep. so he, he went on and did a lot of good things. Yep, and... sure did. <laughs> okay. Well. I think he needs another round of applause. Before I let him go, he gets to choose. Oh, gets my to goodness. Choose. talked about birds and you said birds are cold-blooded and you went on and I thought that doesn't sound right so I kind of raised my hand and you didn't call on me so I just finally put my hand down because I didn't want to have you be upset for interrupting you and then in the end you said now I said birds were were cold-blooded and nobody corrected me <laughs> then I wish I would have <laughs> he says you guys weren't even listening. But we were. I remember you because you found an error in the biology book, and you wrote the uh, publisher about that, and it was right. You were right. Awesome. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, we want you to keep visiting, but we also have refreshments in the kitchen and things to look at. So. Get on with it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thanks.